The photos of Mars are, that are being sent back from Perseverance rover are truly remarkable. While the rover is seeking signs of past microbial life and collecting samples of rock and soil, it's also paving the way for future human missions. I got the chance to learn more about this otherworldly expedition from a NASA insider. We're really excited about this mission. You know, Perseverance is the first rover to land on Mars since Curiosity in 2012. So what makes this rover so special? Yeah, this rover is just jam-packed with all kinds of new technological advances uh, compared to what the Curiosity rover had. It might look the same on the outside. It's built using the same sort of basic rover chassis, but the instruments that this rover is carrying with it are sort of purpose-built for carrying out an investigation of uh, you know, whether or not life may have arisen on Mars in its ancient geological past. Uh, so it, it's got a whole new suite of instruments, beefed up wheels to, to drive over the terrain without you know, creating any damage on the wheels. And of course, it's, it's also carrying the Ingenuity helicopter. So, so it, it's got a kind of similar appearance on the outside, but it's got all kinds of neat new tools that it's bringing with it to Mars. Yeah, she's impressive for sure. And Perseverance is obviously going to a very intriguing place on Mars that scientists believe was an ancient lake bed. And so what will the rover be studying there? Yeah, so there's sort of a primary target of the, of the investigation of this rover is the rocks that were laid down when this crater was full of water. So there were uh, sediments being carried down into the lake by rivers that were outside of the crater, laying down layer upon layer of sediment that eventually sort of hardened up and turned into rock. And contained in those layers is a record of the environmental history of the planet three and a half billion years ago, and potentially a record of the biological history of Mars if life ever started there. What will happen to those samples and with them? Yeah, so the rover is going to use its instruments to select samples. Basically, we're gonna to try to figure out what are the best samples to collect. It's then gonna deploy its drilling system out on the end of its arm, and it will collect cores of sample that will be about the size of a piece of chalkboard chalk. And it will seal those up inside of tubes. And eventually, when we've collected enough of those tubes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop a cache of them on the ground on Mars, and then the rover will continue its investigation, assuming it's still you know, happy and healthy and driving around. And eventually, uh, in the next eight to 10 years, there will be a series of follow-on missions sent to Mars to go and collect those samples and bring them back to Earth so that we can study them in even more detail in the laboratories that we have here on our planet. And I'd love for you, Joel, to tell viewers what your role is in all this. Yeah, so I'm the deputy principal investigator of one of the instruments on the rover called Pixel. It's a chemical analyzer out on the end of the rover's arm. So I'll be working with our science team and with our team leadership to figure out what are the right places to deploy our instrument uh, onto the rock surfaces on Mars to try to understand something about what they're made of and what that, again, tells us about the environment that those rocks were formed in. This is certainly an exciting time in your field and in your industry. You know, earlier you brought up Ingenuity, which is a really cool device, if you will, or instrument that's going to be used. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Basically, it's a, a, like a little drone helicopter that the rover is going to drop off on the surface of Mars, and it's going to take some test flights around Jezero Crater, collecting images, charging up its solar panels in between flights, sending those images back to the rover uh, so we can beam them back to Earth uh, once we've collected them. It, it's really kind of, you know, we, we like to describe it as kind of a Wright Brothers moment. It's the first instance of powered flight on the surface of another planet. So so we see this as kind of a pathfinder type of technology demonstration to try to figure out, is this something we could do more of in the future? Can we send more helicopters, more powered flight vehicles to, to circle around the surface of Mars and, and get even more coverage than our rovers are able to do? Oh, the things we're going to learn in the next 25 to 50 to 100 years, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully even more, even sooner. <laughs> and, and sooner, yes, in our lifetime, indeed. How does this mission set the stage for future human missions to Mars? So we've also got an instrument on board the rover called uh, MOXIE, and this is a uh, an instrument that is designed to extract air from the Martian atmosphere 
and convert it into oxygen uh, and and to, to basically demonstrate that that if we send sort of a bigger you know version of that instrument to the surface of Mars, we can we can extract resources that we would need from the Martian atmosphere and provide, in this case, you know, breathable oxygen for astronauts. So it's it's a it's a first stepping stone towards showing that we can build the technology that is needed to help humans survive on the surface of Mars if we ever are you know fortunate enough to be able to send them there. It's fun to be a part of the firsts, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Boy, what a pleasure, Joel. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. This is really nice talking to you. If you thought the epic landing of Perseverance was something, just wait until you see the plan to launch the samples back to Earth in 2031. For the latest updates on the Mars mission and to see incredible high-def photos of the red planet straight from Perseverance, go to NASA.gov.